All right, let's talk about furry YouTube and what it's like being a YouTuber who specializes entirely in furry topics, discussion, niche, culture, whatever it may be. As a lot of you probably know, I started making YouTube videos back in 2012, back when I was 14 years old, had just gotten out of middle school. I really wanted to get into commentating, making YouTube videos, telling a story, being inspired by all the Call of Duty commentators that I had watched at the time. That's when I asked my parents for a graduation gift from my middle school, a $40 capture card that recorded in 480p, a $20 microphone from Best Buy, and that was it. And then I got started with what whatever I was doing on YouTube, which was just strictly commentary. It evolved as time went on, and I eventually struck gold in 2017 when I made my seven levels of being a furry, which was kind of my claim to fame, and still is. I wouldn't be here today if I didn't do that video. As much as I might look back at it and be like, ah, shit, I'd beat the shit out of myself if I could from back then, but that's besides the point. I started making furry YouTube videos in 2018 to 2019, and then eventually come 2021, I was able to start doing this as a full-time job. So as of right now, I've been doing full-time furry YouTube for about three years now. As a lot of you have seen, I've had my on and off moments with regards to making furry content, wanting to try to break out of the mold with that, being a little jaded with the whole furry audience that I had at the time, which we may or may not talk about it, but I had my moments back in 2021, 2022, and 2023. But we're here now, and you know, we learn from those mistakes, and I'm happy to say I'm happy doing what I do full-time. But there are some things that I've wanted to talk about it for a while, but haven't really known how to discuss it in an appropriate manner without sounding one, full of myself, or two, ungrateful for what I have. Which, before I even start any of this, I do want to say that I am immensely grateful for the position that I'm in. I wake up every single day feeling blessed for what I have. Being able to say that I have an audience, a platform. Being able to say that I can do this sustainably as a career. It's a scary thing to be able to say, especially when you've been told what to do all your life and now you're just trying to figure out what you do on your own terms. Trust me, it is, it's been really rough even trying to keep any sort of schedule, trying to get any sort of work done in hopes of paying off rent or whatever bills that need to be. As much as it's fun, it's a scary thing that has its pros and cons. But at the end of the day, Regardless of where it goes, I am immensely grateful for the position that I'm in, for the opportunities that have been given as a result, the community and audience that I've cultivated, and I keep in mind that many, many people would kill for the position that I am in. Not even to the extent of being able to do it full time, but even just saying that they have people watching them. Because trust me, YouTube is a very, very unforgiving landscape. The algorithm does not really care. It just wants people to click on whatever video it might be. There are many people who have tried and done their absolute best and just weren't able to get anything. And that comes down to, a lot of times, luck. You could have some of the best videos put out there on YouTube, and it would not matter at the end of the day if people don't click on it. And that could be because of the wrong place at the wrong time of uploading it, the algorithm just not picking it up, or other factors that are entirely out of your control. It sucks to say that that is the reality of it, but that's just what we deal with. That's something that I've known for many years now. So that's why I say I am incredibly, incredibly lucky to be in the position that I am, because not many people do get to be. As much as you might want it and try for it, there's no guarantee it will happen. And that goes for any sort of content creation, any sort of creative outlet where you're looking to gain an audience out of it, whether it's Twitch streaming, YouTube video making, TikToks, Instagram, whatever other social media platform, there's no guarantee that you'll get to where you might want to. No matter how much you network or try, it is very, very hard to even sustain something. And so that's why for me, I feel incredibly grateful every single day for what I do. This for me is a dream job. As a lot of you also know, I did go to college for engineering. I graduated with my bachelor's of science degree in mechanical engineering. I went through the whole thing, give or take a quarter of a million dollars dunked into a degree. I made zero use of it at the end of the day because I went into YouTube full time. By the time I did graduate, you know, COVID and lockdown was happening, so I couldn't really find a job. So I put a lot of my focus into YouTube and come a year after I could confidently say by June 2021, I was able to do it full time all on my own. 
And that is something that I will be immensely grateful for, even being able to do it for one month, let alone three years. So despite what I might be talking about today with regards to YouTube, the caveats, the pros and cons of being a YouTuber, wishing certain things could go differently or better, it doesn't mean that I'm ungrateful, and I hope to God it doesn't sound like I'm egotistical or trying to be like, look at me, I'm great and amazing. I'm V Beta Eta Delota. Mm. A lot of times I do very much joke about it. Like I'm sure you've heard some little quips of mine being like, um, do you know who I am? I'm Beta Eta Delota. Wave two on V fur. Uh, biggest furry YouTuber currently. Hmm. Like, I joke about that all the time because, you know, I just don't ever firmly believe that. I would never think of myself as that way. If anything, I feel like a lot of you see how I view myself as just a random idiot that makes YouTube videos and just got lucky at the right time. I'm just a guy that talks about how he feels, applies a lot of his knowledge and mindset to talking about whatever subject it might be, wanting to tell some story, and then it just happened to work out. Because that's really all it is. I, I never did anything super special from what anyone else could do. In fact, there are plenty of other YouTubers, I feel like, who deserve to be in the position I'm in, who put a lot more work and effort and expertise into whatever they're crafting. So either way, let's talk about what it's like like to be a furry YouTuber, because let me tell you, despite it having some amazing things that come with it, amazing opportunities, there are some parts of it that God, I despise, which actually let's get the first one out of the way, which I'm sure a lot of others who have made YouTube videos can agree with Th this fucking thing right here, that that rating system, the one out of 10 or 10 of 10, that is the worst fucking thing they implemented into YouTube, period. I'm telling you right now, I hate that fucking thing, both as a business owner who does this full time and as someone who just like putting whatever video out there that they enjoy. I fucking hate that. It is the worst thing ever. If you don't know what it is, it's a system that ranks the past 10 or so videos with the one that you most recently uploaded and analyzes it based on performance over time compared to those videos. So that's why it ranks it one of 10. If it's a one of 10, then it means you did a great job. It means the video is performing super well. There's like confetti. All the arrows are pointing in the green. It's a great, you know, thing to see. If it performs like nine or 10 of 10, 10, it's usually something like, oh, fewer regular videos are watching this video. Click to see more details. And I usually interpret that as like, hey, you fucking suck. You're awful. Yeah, that's what it feels like when I see it. So I just I mainly try to ignore it. But God, it's just so obnoxious because it's the first thing you see. So that's probably one of my biggest gripes with being a YouTuber, having to see that goddamn function, which it's good that it's there because analytically you want to break down how a video is performing compared to others. But also, every video is a tad bit different with what you do, uh, especially the subject matter of my videos, so some naturally will get a lot more clicks than others. If I talk about weird furry convention drama situations, some people might be more interested in that than whatever furry IRL meme review I have to do, which is kind of the case with the video that's happening recently. I don't realistically care in hindsight, I'm just glad that people enjoy the video and are commenting on it saying that they enjoy it, so thank you for that. But it's just tough to see that, I'm like, God, can you go the fuck away? Like, that's the one function I feel like a lot of other YouTubers will complain about if they ever get the opportunity to. The whole business aspect of doing YouTube is also something I'm very interested in as well. I might not be great at it, but I am learning every single day. And the one thing to keep in mind as well is the business side of YouTube and doing this, you know, as your full time thing. The one thing that really needs to be checked a lot of times is how you treat it and consider it. And if it's treated too much like a business, then you gotta take a step back. And that's kind of my rule of thumb with how I handle it. And that's why I'm especially kind of nervous to talk about this because when I discuss the business side of it, it seems very, objectifying. Like when I talk about, oh, I need this amount of clicks on a video and people to watch at this amount of time. And at the end of the day, the money that I make is getting people to click on my video. So the currency that I get from what I sell as a business owner is your guys's time. And, and like, I, I hate thinking about it in that sense, because a lot of what I do is not just surface level as that is just trying to, you know, get you to click on a video. I want you to do it, obviously, when I, when anyone puts a video out there on the Internet or posts something creatively expressive, of course, they want some validation for it and they want people to click on it, especially the case with YouTube. I've heard it plenty of times where people have told me, oh, you only do YouTube for the views and you only made this video so people click on it. 
it because it's clickbait or you're just doing this for attention. And it's like, well, I mean, yeah, at a very base level, but all that matters with it is the approach and intention you put into it. And I feel like, or at least I try to make it apparent that my intention with this is to put out a pretty good video to put out something that I'm proud to share with all of you and hope to get more discussions going on whatever it might be. You know how I've made more of a shift to talking about furry drama recently? Well, I talk about it not because it's like the hit clickable thing, but because I've found that whenever I see it happening, I'm just like, wait a minute, there's such like a straightforward approach to it to kind of break this down so that I'm not overreacting like some people might be about it and giving, you know, an end goal, an end game approach so that drama like that that happens in the future is either minimized or erased entirely. So that's why I started doing videos on it because I had a knack for it and I really enjoyed explaining things in a manner that was constructive rather than destructive. Because a lot of times when you see furry drama on Twitter about like, you know, he said, she said this or a furry convention did this or that, it's very easy to get caught up in the anger of it all. That someone was wrong, that's, that this big bad did something bad and shame on them. Well, there's always two sides to it. And also there's a way to go about handling feedback and whatnot and giving it out constructively. But a lot of times, especially on social media, and especially the case on furry Twitter in the past few years, a lot of things are done destructively, as in trying to put people down, put down others for whatever action that they did, and they usually end up getting treated not like a person. And in some cases, it might be applicable depending on the drama, but a lot of times it's unwarranted. So that's why I started doing, you know, the furry drama videos as a whole. Do they get good clicks? Yes, but that's not entirely the reason why I do it. The main reason why I do it is because I like talking about it and, and hoping to shed some light on something that might have a lot of misinformation in it or people might not fully know. And talking about it in a way where we can all come to some better conclusion about it so that it isn't just people yelling at one another. So when people say, you know, I do videos for clicks, they're not wrong, but it all comes down to the intention with it. And, you know, with the intention that I've said, I feel like it isn't for the case of doing a video because it's a hot click topic. I do it because I want to. And that's kind of the bottom line with why I do furry YouTube, which I, I'm sure you've seen in the past how I have struggled with the idea of wanting to do furry YouTube or wanting to move to some other bigger thing. Like, I remember last year I had this moment where I was like, I want to get out of furry YouTube and I want to be more than that. I want to be a YouTuber who is a furry, but talks about a lot more. And I really tried to break out of that mold, that niche that I was in. But for many reasons, and that one mainly being that the algorithm will strictly see me as a furry creator, a lot of the other stuff that I do that was non-furry obviously just didn't do as well. And that's no one's fault, and I'm not, you know, faulting anyone because, you know, videos did bad. It's just how it is. Like, sadly enough, this summer, I had, like, a very big plan for, like, a bunch of videos that I wanted to try that would maybe get me out there. The, the whole, like, Sporticus video that I did, the Risk of Rain challenge video, the SCP video, and all three of those ended up being the worst performing videos on the channel, like, to date. As sad as that is, I don't regret doing them because I had a lot of fun trying it. It was something I got to try, but it was especially a learning experience at the end of the day for me. I learned that, you know, maybe this wasn't meant to be, and that's okay. It just means I get to shoot my shot at something else. So the big thing about being a furry YouTuber full-time, or at least I guess a YouTuber full-time, and I say this as non-objectively as I can, but this is the sad reality of it, a lot of the success and income as a result that comes to me is strictly through you guys clicking on a video. This video even is going to generate ad revenue. I'm going to make money from it and I'll be able to use it to fund future projects that I want to do. You know, being able to buy a Costco hot dog for $1.50, being able to pay rent even. So my business is to some extent getting you guys to click on my video. And, and that's just what it is with business. With a business, you're trying to sell something at the end of the day, some product, some service, and usually the currency of which is money at the end of the day, but that comes in different forms, whether that's sales from what you're offering or time invested from who you're trying to get to watch you. And for me, the currency that you guys offer me is time, whether that's clicking on a video for six seconds or three minutes or 10 minutes or the full length of whatever this video even will be. That is what, to some extent, I am selling. It's a sad reality, but I don't think about it in that sense because I don't really consider what I do as strictly a form of trade. I just do it because 
I enjoy what I talk about. And it's neat to me to see like 10,000 people watch a video about like for a YouTube or something. I'm like, wow, that's that's really neat. You know, that people are interested in learning about what I have to say about something like that. So uh, that's always going to be like the most humbling sort of experience and mindset that I'm going to have with it. That anyone, anyone out there is willing to watch what I have to offer, which even, hey, at this point in the video, for those watching, hi, I hope you're doing well. I appreciate you watching this. It really does mean a lot. And when I say it does, I mean it. I really don't see myself as doing much besides being a rambler. And I guess that's the whole thing of how I pictured myself as a YouTuber from the get go. Like whenever I thought of YouTuber as me, as Ben, back in like, 2012 when I wanted to get into this. I always thought of the idea of having a group of friends around a campfire or something. Everyone's sitting on those like log benches and they're looking for someone to tell a story. They're looking for someone to spin a novel that everyone will be like fascinated by, that everyone wants to listen to, uh, that anyone wants to hear life advice about. And I always thought of YouTube or at least applied to me as that storyteller, as that person to give advice, to give experiences, to talk about his point of view, to invite for future discussion, and to just be someone that people want to listen to at the end of the day. That's what I've wanted. So whenever I get like the, the compliment on my videos or streams that like, hey, I put you on in the back while I'm doing like art or while I'm making a first student, like that is that is genuinely the best compliment I could ever receive. Thank you so much. I like I genuinely mean that because by proxy of you saying that, you are fulfilling the happiness that I guess my 14 year old self had wanted back when he started YouTube. So this whole thing with YouTube is a weird balance between treating it as a hobby, as something that is a creative outlet, because that's what it is at the end of the day for me and treating it also as a business. And that balancing act is very, very tough because a lot of times you just want to treat it as something for fun. If I realistically could in a perfect world, I do like furry plays this video game part 53, but we, but you and I both know not many people are going to click on that. That's not the feasible reality that we live in. And you kind of have to market things in a different way now. What's the term for it again? The meta. Yeah, the whole meta with making videos or marketing it in a way to get people to click on it, which within the realm of even just YouTube in general, there's a fine line, especially between like clickbait and like misinformation. A lot of times I get told that my videos are clickbait based on the thumbnail or the title and that, you know, they are unsatisfied with what's in the actual video, which I get it. You know, not every one of my videos is for everyone and not everyone will like what I have to put out there just in general. But the definition that I have of clickbait is more of trying to get someone to click on a video, embellishing the cover of it in a way that makes someone want to watch it for a certain amount of time or just in general wanting to get someone to click on it. I try to avoid things that are super clickbaity in a way because I want the truth of the video to be what is in the title and thumbnail, which as sad as that is, YouTube as a job is more or less judge a book by its cover, the website. Everything that I do, no matter how good of a video that I make, it almost always depends on the thumbnail and the title to market it and get people to click on it in the first place. And that is the probably the suckiest reality. That's the one thing that I've struggled the most with as a creator, marketing a video so that I can get anyone to click on it, so I can get you guys to watch it. And I'm not saying this in any way to make anyone feel bad or good. It's just kind of the reality of, of how things are that I want to talk about. And I'm trusting, you know, you guys to understand that I don't consider you as like, I guess, objective, like, I guess an, an object that I, I need to click on things like I can I consider you people, of course, you know, you're, you're you view my stuff. I'm appreciative. It means a lot. A fellow human being enjoys what I have to watch, enjoys what I have to put out there. And that means genuinely the world to someone who has always wanted to be listened to and be able to express themselves and and, and be valid for who they are especially someone who's struggled with who they are through all their life, which that that whole thing is another conversation for later, maybe about like ADHD and autism, uh, because it's something that I have definitely looked into. But yeah, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but more of the point with YouTube, it's it's a balance and a struggle on how to really handle it, to not look at it as entirely a business venture, to not see what you're doing as, oh, this will get a good amount of views, which, yeah, you know, you might think about that. I've had many moments where 
Trust me, I've had many moments where I have made a video, I've had the final product, the thumbnail and title all together. I'm like, this is it. This is gonna do so well. People are gonna love this. This is gonna get so many clicks. It's gonna be so well received. And then it flops entirely. And then the next day, I'll just put out like a shit post video, be like, eh, whatever, you know, have fun with it. And then it ends up being the one that blows up. I'm like, you know what? I can't win. I, I know artists also have this struggle too, especially when posting on social media where you'll make this like masterpiece of art and it might not get as many clicks as like a little shit post meme doodle that you might post the next day. It's the sad struggle of it, but I've learned in, in recent years with it happening more and more to just chuckle at it and keep going because with regards to YouTube and any sort of, I guess, business out there. I've always considered it, you miss the shots you don't take. If you take shots, you have a better chance of hitting them. And those shots and getting them in the basket or whatever it is, is an analogy for having a big hit with whatever you're putting out, whether it's a fursuit, a video, an art piece, whatever you're trying to sell. And for me, for the longest time, I thought that putting out more and more and more videos without even assessing the quality of them was the right way to do it. Hence the regurgitation era that I like to talk about often, which was when I would have high YouTube moments on stream. Uh, a lot of my videos would strictly be stream highlights of discussions put together and that would be it. And a lot of people got sick of it, and that is understandably reasonable. But to some extent, I still did like doing that, so I found an alternative solution with turning my secondary Boodles channel into more of the stream highlight fun stuff channel that I like doing stream stuff on, as sort of like my actual creative outlet outside of just these fully fledged, fully informed and well edited videos on here. So yeah, I figured out what I'm doing with my two channels. Fun, fun little fact. So the reason why I'm even making this video in the first place is because I had a very interesting conversation with a friend of mine named Kai. I met him at Furpok this year and in all honesty, he's probably my biggest fursuit crush to date. He is a hot fursuit, but outside of that, he's a pretty cool and chill guy. And him and I actually kind of got to know one another because he does something in a similar realm to me, where his entire career and job is based around furry to some extent, where he vends with his partner, who's an artist, at conventions. He's traveling constantly, going to cons, trying to sell things, trying to make profit from sales or whatever it is that they're putting out there, and so on. He actually asked me what my thoughts and feelings were with doing YouTube full time and if I shared a lot of the similar sentiments with him with regards to burnout or worry about trying to get the bills paid when things might not be going as well, with having the struggle of having that energy to even go on to the next con or make that next video or if you're just so exhausted of trying that, you know, you just kind of take a break. When you take a break, you just kind of make your own personal videos outside of, you know, the businessy ones. And it was definitely some good food for thought. I still haven't gotten back to him yet about it. Um, I'll send a voice message after this video, but um, but the bottom line is that message got me thinking and is what inspired this video to be. So big shout out to Kai. Thank you for helping me form the ideas and thoughts that I've wanted to for a long while now about this topic as a whole. Which you're probably wondering, Beta, why did you title the video Being a Furry YouTuber is Rough, or Being a Furry YouTuber Full Time is Hard, a Struggle, uh, so on, insert whatever adjective here. And the reason why is because, well, I'm gonna be talking about it today, and also because that is what I see as relevant to the meta that is YouTube, and that's the sad fucking reality of it is I can't just say like, hey, let's talk about furry YouTube and have that be the title. You know, I have to embellish it in some way. I have to make it interesting. Was it interesting that you want to hear me talk about some of the downsides of being a furry YouTuber or just a YouTuber by proxy? Well, here you go. I'm going to talk about it. And that's kind of why, you know, that is what it is. It sucks, but that is the reality I live in. But what I try to do to make up for that is make the best possible fucking videos that I can. And that hasn't changed since, I guess, last year when I made that big shift from doing, you know, real in-time videos rather than, you know, live stream highlights. But there are definitely many of caveats with being a full-time YouTuber. The main thing is that despite this being my dream job and something that I wish was the most perfect thing in the world, it is still a job at the end of the day. There are things that I might have to do, decisions I might have to make, people I might have to interact with who I just don't even like at all that I have to for the sake of doing what I need to do as a business owner, which as a business owner, you don't just want to worry about your business 
business in real time, you wanna worry about the future of it and growing it. I try not to really think about this, and, and to be honest, it feels kind of weird and slimy even mentioning this because it just sounds so objectifying and, and cold and like, ah, yes, I did this video to make, you know, this amount of money and make people watch it. And it's just, it, it feels so weird because at the end of the day, like what I'm making is what I enjoy. It's not done for any other reason than that. If I really wanted to, you know, make a shit ton of money, I'd just go back into like my engineering field. I have a degree in it. Why not just go and do it? Why not just go and get a job in engineering? You know, if I if I want to be well off and not worry about the money, but I'd prefer having, you know, the freedom to be able to do this and run my own business and be a YouTuber full time, tr have that be the trade off, be money and income to be able to do what I love. I've always thought of life as a carpe diem, live in the moment sort of thing. Like I'd rather live my life enjoying what I do than hating it. And honestly, every single time I think of doing any sort of engineering job, I, I just gag at it a little because I never truthfully was that interested in engineering. I, I kind of just went into the field because there wasn't really any other option. My parents were like, you got to choose some sort of STEM field. I'm like, well, I'd be a failure of a doctor. I hate business. I hate law school. I'm never going to go to law school. Let me tell you that. Uh, so I chose engineering and that ended up being what I went for for four years. And I chose the, the least stressful field, which was mechanical engineering. And here we are. It was relatively interesting. I enjoyed it a little bit. But in terms of a job, I just I don't know. I wouldn't like it as much as what I do here and now, you know, and I've, I've still been doing YouTube for well over a decade now. I've been making videos like almost every day for well over a decade and I still absolutely love it. I love this thing. Like as much as I might complain about certain aspects of it or it might not be perfect or I could see certain things being better with, you know, not getting to see that 10 out of 10 video or hoping that every video I put out there is a banger, I still love this. I still absolutely adore this. It's still rough. There are things that could be better. I would love to have a sustainable income. I would like to have some job security, but that's just kind of the trade-off and the gamble with being a business owner and doing your own thing. And let me clarify as well, when I say I try to get people to click on whatever video I make, it's not in a way where I'm desperate for it, where I'm trying to lie or mislead anyone into watching what I have to offer. That's why there's a big difference between clickbait and misleading. Clickbait is something where you embellish a video to the point where it kind of degrades what the main subject or what, what really is in the video it has to offer that might deviate from what people are clicking on. Like if I said, you know, furry YouTube is awful. I feel like that would be a bit more of a clickbaity title than what I might have right now as being a furry YouTuber full time is rough. That's more applicable and less clickbait than the initial title. The clickbaitness of the first title is that it might get you a bit more interested to see it. But, you know, if I don't deliver on it as much, then that's the clickbait nature of it. Uh, there's a big difference with it with misleading it, with putting a narrative there for what the subject and title and thumbnail of the video is compared to what I'm delivering. And what I try to do to mitigate or minimize a lot of the, the clickbait nature is describe things is try to just put the best videos I can out there because I'm doing what I love at the end of the day. I don't have any reason to really lie or hide anything. So I'm just truthfully, unapologetically me and I talk about whatever it is that I'm talking about in the best way I can. And there have been many times, trust me, many times where I've had a video topic, even at this point where I'm fully recording it and I think this is a pretty okay one. And then I start to think about it and review the footage and I'm like, you know what? I could have done better with this. I scrap the whole project and I either start over or try to add something to it to make it a bit more in line with what I would be proud to put out there. I know I'm saying this all and you know, you can take it at face value or not trust me and that's okay, but I, trust me when I say, I really do try to put the best stuff out there that I can. I might be bad at it, I might not know how to audio balance or apply background music to videos, uh, but at the end of the day, I do try. And the one thing that you can do, and that's something I was even talking about on stream earlier today of like, I'm no graphic designer, I don't know how to put together anything, I don't know how to make fully fledged film level videos on YouTube documentaries. Well, start trying. The only way to really know if you can or can't and you know get better at it is to try. 
and keep trying and see where you can improve with it until eventually you get to the point where you can. And that's kind of, you know, the one thing that I'm shifting into in the future, getting better at graphic design so I can make better thumbnails and other things. But also I want to make a bit more, you know, in-depth vlogs and kind of documentary style videos. I have a couple of adventures and vlogs that I'm going to be doing in the future on here that I really want to be like pristine, like really, really good quality. And so, you know, that's something to keep a note of in the future, keep on the lookout for. I can't exactly say what those are. They're good things, let me tell you that. But, but it's something that I want to improve with. And, and that's what I'm trying to find every day to keep myself sane and not allow myself to get burnt out necessarily, is just to keep improving in one little thing in what I do, whether it's understanding the analytics better, uh, trying to make a video thumbnail a little bit nicer, trying to polish a video a little bit more, you know, make some of the cuts or zoom ins or edits a little bit nicer, maybe even trying to apply background music a bit better, looking for some better, more fitting ones. Just adjusting and fine tuning it here and there so that I can feel like I'm improving even still in a field that I've been doing this for for over a decade. And that's another thing I haven't even talked about either. Burnout is such a real thing, especially when you're your own boss and you're kind of doing the same thing every day. Burnout is such an easy thing to have happen to you in any sort of creative outlet that you have. It could be for fursuit making, artistry, and especially for YouTube videos. I remember plenty of points where I expressed that I was burnt burnt out with making furry YouTube videos, so I made shifts to making non-furry YouTube videos, or I focused on other things. And I found that the, the best solution for this is spreading myself out creatively so that I can still do creative stuff, but just in different ways. So for me, I have YouTube, which is a lot of videos that I do on the main channel. On the secondary channel is entirely just stuff that I want to do for fun. Anything that I want to go over that wouldn't really be fitting for the main channel, anything that I do on stream that I want to turn into a video, I might focus on that for a little bit. If I'm really done with just making videos in general, I focus entirely on streaming. I have a whole platform for that on Twitch, and that's something that I come back to every so often. And even if that's that burnout, well, I guess I go into scripting videos or planning things a bit more in the writing sense. And then when I'm feeling like recording things, I'll get into that. It's really just kind of flip-flopping between different things that I'm able to do creatively and express myself. Not everyone has has that luxury. I'm very fortunate to have been able to do that and still do that, but it's something that's actually helped with a lot of burnout recently for me. I know my friend Kai was talking about burnout in the sense of, you know, going to cons, vending over and over and, you know, you know, kind of dreading it to some extent, worried, you know, of like if things will turn out well or not. And like, I totally get that, especially with like videos and putting them out there at the right time and uploading them as well as I can. But, you know, when you hyper focus and worry on that, that's where I've realized I need to take a step back and focus on other things or try and shift my focus to another creative endeavor, whether that's helping other friends with their streams and videos. I fucking love doing that, too. And if, if anyone ever asks me for like YouTube advice, I, I will absolutely help you. Like, oh my God, it's just not many people actually ask me that, believe it or not. Like when I was um, when I was helping my friend Snowy get started with streaming and telling him about all the caveats with like YouTube analytics kind of like this conversation here, but a bit more in depth. He was like, Beta, why don't you do like videos or series or whatnot on this? I'm like, no one really ever asks me about how to really grow a channel or how to get started. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, no, no one really asked me to do any of that or for help or expertise in that. And that's kind of like why I said I just kind of stick in my own lane. And that's, I guess, another thing to mention about, you know, furry YouTube being rough, at least in the realm that I have, is I've kind of secluded myself. I don't really talk to many other creators. Uh, as much as I should, and I should probably expand my horizons a little bit. Easiest solution is to start talking to people more and just trying, you know, putting myself out there. And and that's really it at the end of the day. But the bottom line with furry YouTube, the topics can get a little bit old. They can be a little depressing, especially when all that might need to be talked about in a moment is just furry drama this, furry news that, this person did a bad, that convention did a bad. It gets a bit exhausting. So that's why, you know, whenever there have been these palate cleanses that come up, which as an example, the consent identification badges for furry conventions or furries in general, those looked awesome and I had a great time doing that video. It wasn't doom and gloom, it wasn't sad, it was just nice and happy because it was something good that 
that happened in the end. So within the prospect of furry YouTube, of just like doing it, subjects can be very aloof at times, trying to find out what the next idea is for what you want to talk about can be rough. That's why even now, when there's not much going on, I guess in the realm of drama, or not really any positive stuff to talk about, and everyone's just kind of enjoying furry for what it is with convention stuff. That's why I opted to do this video per se, just to talk about my experiences. I thought of it as like, wow, this would be fun to discuss. I always write my ideas down in like a little notebook. I have this little handheld notebook, Welcome to Garlic Worlds with diffuse mousse on the front of it. And you know, I write all my ideas in it. It literally has like all sorts of fucking topics. I like literally, next video, double-edged sword and furry. Gonna be talking about that at some point and what that means find out in that video. But that's also something that I do to mitigate a lot of burnout is whenever I think of an idea for some video or topic, I write it down immediately. I have like a whole Telegram channel that I write down and link all the ideas that I have for whatever video or topic or thing that I wanna cover. And especially if I have no ideas, I just go out and experience life. The best thing to kind of fight burnout is to try something new and just go out in the world and do something. And that's what I found with, you know, going to furry conventions as much as it's part of like, I guess the job to some extent with being furry YouTuber, it's still a way for me to kind of get out there and socialize. Cause a lot of times truth be told, which is another caveat about or downside to being a full-time YouTuber is you don't really get out as much, you know, unless your job really, qualifies for that where you're like traveling, you know, exploring and doing vlogs and whatnot, you don't really get out there. It's very easy to find yourself during most of the day, just kind of in front of a computer screen, either editing, scripting a video, recording the next thing, and then going to bed and then repeating that process. I found myself doing that a lot, and that's why, you know, gotta take some steps back, gotta understand what my off time is, which is, you know, during weekends or when I go to conventions and really just thrive in that environment. So that's another thing with content creatorship and uh, I guess, creative expression, remember to experience life outside of it. As much as life might be its own little bubble, you gotta kinda step out there and enjoy some other things, and that's what I uh, try to do. See what I mean, though? A lot of what I say here, I'm either talking in circles or I'm forgetting about stuff that I could easily mention, and that's why even with this video, it's probably not even fully finished either. It's just sort of a broad summary of many different things about being a full-time content creator in the furry realm especially. So whatever I don't cover in this video, I'll probably end up doing in a future video. There's plenty of things that I still wanna talk about with regards to being seen as a popular or popufur furry. Uh, and being a known member in the community, someone who streams on Twitch, and, and so many other perspectives that I've had over the years with the furry experience or just how I've kind of taken it. So there's plenty more videos like this that will be happening in the future, but if I didn't cover anything here that you probably wanted to hear me talk about, uh, be sure to let me know in the comments. I, I greatly appreciate any questions that you might have about it that I could answer in the future. But either way, being a YouTuber has its pros and cons. You can deal with many different issues of burnout, of not figuring out what the next idea is, the next big video, which is something a lot of people try to do, that next big project that'll pay well or will boost you up into the next level. There's worries of sustainability. There's worries of job security. Uh, main thing for me too is insurance, which I had to get my own. And and surprisingly enough, which is kind of its, its own funny, ironic joke to me, uh, I do OnlyFans, which a lot of you know, because I've talked about it here before. That whole payment monthly pays for my health insurance, which is really, really fucking funny to me. So to, to those that support me there, I appreciate it. Am I telling you where to find it? Absolutely fucking lutely not, because that would be irresponsible for me to do so. And also that whole thing about, I guess, doing OnlyFans, I don't do it because I need to do it. It's because I want to, because, you know, I have an adult side that I like expressing, so there's that. But being a YouTuber or content creator full-time has its pros and cons. A lot of the negatives being that, you know, you feel like your life is consumed by it, you feel like you have to work a little bit harder than what you would in a normal nine to five just to kind of make ends meet. With being a YouTuber specifically, your income is entirely based off if people like what you do and watch it. I know for even streamers per se, for full-time Twitch streamers, a lot of it is based off of viewer generosity, which is a whole level above that that I haven't even discussed either, which I'm still very grateful for anyone that supports me monetarily 
period, let alone supports me with their time and watching what I do. And there are many other things with it that I probably haven't even mentioned here. Burnout, feeling like you're consumed by what you do, trapped by what you do. You feel you have to continue to serve the specific niche that you're in, whether that's a game you specialize in or a hobby that you talk about for your full thing, with me, that being furry. It might also feel like when you have a hobby that is your full-time job, that it's very hard to separate your private and public life as a result. If people know who you are, which this is more of a conversation in the popular furry realm and parasocial relationship discussion video that I'll have at some point, it can be hard to find that balance between your public life and personal life, especially when you treat your hobby as your job too. Going to furry conventions for me can be part of the job with, you know, being a YouTuber and filming that for a video or talking about it in a video, but to me it also is treated as a hobby. It is my escape and vacation to enjoy a time with friends. It's a very tricky fine line, a lot of balancing and kind of checking yourself and, and remembering to keep yourself sane in the grand scheme of what you do. And always remember where you came from, the roots that you started from, and why you even started in the first place. And for me, I always want to do YouTube because I wanted to be a storyteller, because I wanted my voice to be support for people, to be comfort, to be interesting or fascinating, and I feel like to this day, I'm still fulfilling that. And that's why I still do YouTube full time, despite all the bad stuff that might come with it. Because in the end, a lot of the good outweighs the bad. I am still in a very blessed position, I've had so many opportunities as a result, I, I couldn't even like list them off on my hand, but I'm very immensely grateful for all of it. And I just wanna say again, thank you all so much for all the support these past few years. For those that just lurk and watch my streams or watch my videos in the background while working, you have made such a difference in my life you don't even know. So for that, I thank you for allowing me to have the dream job that I have today. And I promise you, I will do my absolute best to make it worth the time. I'm not gonna run myself ragged over it, but I will continue to put the best videos out there that I can and the ones that I enjoy, because at the end of the day, I just wanna put out the best me that I can be, the honest person that I am in the moment, and I feel like I'm doing that. So on that note, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this, be sure to let me know in the comments, or if you want more topic discussions like this within the realm of, I guess, content creation, the furry side of it, or any of the other subtopics that I've listed in this video, be sure to let me know. I'll be getting all the questions together from this video and maybe doing a follow-up to that, so be sure to let me know in that as well. Even if you want me to talk about my engineering background a little bit that I dabbled a little bit in, which realistically hasn't extended anywhere past school and classes and learning finite element method and really sucking at ANSYS, but still figuring it out somehow. If you want me to cover stuff like that, I'd love to hear about it, so let me know. And please don't feel bad about anything that I say in this video about, you know, trying to meet ends meet or, you know, any of the money that I make being from views or whatnot. I don't want what I say to make you have any reaction to want to watch me more unless it's something you really resonated with. So like, you know, just, don't don't feel like you need to support me any more than you do. You guys just doing what you do and enjoying what I have to offer is all I could ask for. And just enjoying the life that you can for you is what I could ask for as well. I'm not going to promote anything in this video. You know, if you want to, you know where to find it. But just watching this is all I could have really asked for. So thank you guys for that. But that's about going to do it for me. Have a wonderful night. Take care. Life stay jacket. Treat people like people especially. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.